Continuous integration is one of the things that GitLab does best. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about continuous integration, as well as continuous delivery and deployment. Then we'll talk a little about how we do CI/CD at GitLab, and finally, how CI/CD can help us sell GitLab. So first, a little context. In the bad old days, separate developers and groups of developers would work for weeks or months or longer, and then they would try to integrate all that together at the end. Despite documentation that attempted to lay out interfaces and things like that, it never actually worked really well. It was a painful, time-consuming process that was often called integration hell. The solution to it is continuous integration. So in continuous integration, the key is that developers commit small code changes more frequently rather than large changes less frequently. So what we want to see with continuous integration is developers committing code to the repo possibly several times a day. The reason is because changes that are small are easy to understand and manage, easier to make sure there aren't bugs, easier to make sure there aren't security vulnerabilities, and not trying to integrate at the end also tends to lead to overall faster delivery times. So it's not just about moving that integration work back, it really actually makes everything go faster overall. So well, how does this actually work in practice? So the developer checks their code out of the source code repo. And then the idea is that they do the smallest amount of work that makes sense. Typically, you want to uh, have, the, have the code be able to build and pass all of its tests. Then when they're happy with the code, they check it back in right away. Then your continuous integration software is watching the source code repo. It notices the developer has checked in some new code and it gets to work immediately on a series of tasks that we call a continuous integration or CI pipeline. So first off, if the code's written in a language that has to be compiled like C, C++, something like that, the pipeline will compile the code into an executable. Um, otherwise, it will run tests on the code you, often written by the developer alongside the code itself to make sure that no bugs have been introduced. So if the build fails or if any of the tests fail, then, then the pipeline fails and the developer gets notified so they can fix it. After the build and test portion of it, often we run scans on the code. So for example, security scans to look for vulnerabilities uh, or code quality scans. Uh, it really depends on the specific situation. And then finally, the results of that pipeline, which might be an executable file, it might be a container for a web application, is stored so that it can be deployed later. So that's continuous integration. Let's talk a little about CD, of which there are two different versions, continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So in continuous delivery, what you want to do is make sure your code is always production ready. So you want to have a process set up that produces code that's ready to go to production, but the deployment itself, you still want to make a manual step because you want to make sure that things are going through all the processes. You've decided as an organization, you want to have a person in the right role make that call that it should go to prop. In continuous deployment, you've gotten to the point where if every build goes through the process, you're comfortable having it in production. So in that model, the CI/CD pipeline actually ends in your production environment. And at the end of that process, the new code you've written is in production and being used by your end users. So how do we, all, how do, we do all this? Uh, there's three components to our solution. The first is GitLab itself. So the GitLab server coordinates the process, it watches repos, it starts the pipeline, it monitors reports, etc. Then there's the GitLab runner. The GitLab runner is the component that actually executes the steps in the process, whether they are build steps or testing or deployment or scanning. Because we have customers that do all sorts of different things. You know, we have customers that make web applications, mobile apps. Uh, we have ones that do scientific computing and kick off scientific computing jobs from GitLab. Uh, you know, we have customers that do hardware, firmware testing and development. So you got to have a very flexible CI runner and ours definitely is. It will run anywhere that the programming language Go supports. 
So it can run on bare metal, it can run in virtual machines, Kubernetes, Macs, Windows, Linux boxes, you name it. And then the third component is the GitLab CI YAML, which is a human readable configuration file that has all the steps for your CI pipeline. And those steps are in the form of shell commands. So the same commands that your developer uses on their laptop to do a build or kick off a deployment, they can use those commands with, with relatively minor modifications, usually just a few extra steps to set the environment up in their file. So these files are really easy for, to make. They don't require the developers to totally you know, change around their approach. So this file's in GitLab itself, so it's versioned right alongside your code, which makes it very convenient to work on. Um, the results of, of your CI pipelines can be stored right in GitLab if you want. And this whole process uh, is typically done in Docker containers in terms of where the CI runners are actually executing these projects. And that's great because Docker containers allow you to guarantee that every time you run a pipeline, the environment will be exactly the same. Whereas if you're running them on your laptop, maybe a library is different, maybe something else has been changed. Um, and then it can throw away the environment when you're done and you can get a fresh one next time. So that works really well. 